Hello again, and welcome to Mansion Talk. I am Tammy Garthwaite. Woo! Woohoo! And I am Carla Garrick, and welcome back to Mench Talk. Yeah, it's been, we had a little little break because uh, the people who produce the show and whatnot in the studio had the 4th of July week off, which is good for them. Thank oh. you. Yeah, we I appreciate needed them. Break. Yep. Yeah, and it's always nice to have a break. July is a tough month. I um, Not a tough month, but I think it's just, there so, always seems to be so much going on in July. You know, like already, Dan and I wanted to camp once more during July, and I'm like, yeah, that's not going to happen. I'd like, I'm looking at the wheat, and I'm like, oh, I have to go here, and I have to go oh, here, and there's this. I mean, so there's, I'm like, okay, forget about it. Just focus on August. Gardening. Yes. It's, you know, taking care of stuff. I'm traveling. I fly to Vegas tomorrow for mm. a conference till Sunday. Vegas is a lot. It's hot um, this year. Yeah, and they I'm, said I, this is like the record I'm hottest, hottest year. Well, one year, actually, I laughed. Like, people, we're so weird. So in Vegas which is built in the middle of the desert. Yeah. There's no water. I mean, it is sort of a testament to like man-made ingenuity, yeah. but also it's kind of crazy. Um, most of the door handles are like metals. So they're, so they're hotter coppers than... and stuff. So when it gets that hot, it, everything they have to have door handlers who have like literally like oven mitts in order to open the doors for you. And I was like, Someone There's gotta should be a have way thought to, that yeah. through or replace the handles with plastic right, put some, that looks like metal or something. Right. But, you know, it just... Uh, it's just funny that we can build everything and then we can't do the little things sometimes. The little things. Like, I don't know, just asking your neighbors when you want to so, just build something in so, their backyard. Um, I did talk about this. I don't know if it was with you on the show or not, but we did talk about this briefly um, prior. So just a little background so everybody at home that doesn't know what the hell Carla and I are talking about knows what the heck Carla and I are talking about. So there has been in the works for, say, in a year or so. Well, they claim from last well, November. So Right. So, a, you know, a fair amount of time. Um, interest in building, this is the s step one of this, in building a boys and girls club on the west side of Manchester. So I'm going to pause. I happen to think having a boys and girls club on the west side of Manchester would be good for the kids living on the west side of Manchester. Just to clarify, because somebody I'm sure will, you know, twist what we're saying. So in, in comes a group of people, which is how these things happen and whatever. And the Stebbins family, um, Mark Stebbins was a very um, big donor to the boys and girls club on the east side. Um, his family and a group of others um, started organizing to try to find a place and everything. Um, Brittany Ping, who's part of We Heart West, was involved in the initial committee to look at, you know, to talk about it and whatnot. She had pitched me on like why why we need it, what, you know, how there's limited um, things for kids, activities and whatnot. And if you're living in, you know, if you live in near Catholic Medical Center in a three family house and you're a kid, I don't know, there probably isn't a whole lot for you to do on the west side and chances are your family's not bussing you over to the boys and girls club on the east side and i get that part which is also you know maybe a 15 minute walk which is right. good exercise which you know people could do there are several bus yeah. routes that run across so, there you know it, it it's not like we live in dallas no. or san francisco or some city where it takes you two hours to get from one point of the city to the other so uh, back in june um, the Mark Stebbins Community Center, which is planning to be a nonprofit, but I don't believe at this point has fought, has obtained nonprofit status, which I talked about, went to the Lands and Buildings Committee, um, which is a subcommittee of the Board of Mayor and Aldermen, to propose purchasing for $600,000 a parcel of land that is adjacent to Parkside Middle School between Hebe Street, Dead End, Parkside Middle Street, and down the hill from and And from adjacent Court. to, to yeah. my property. Right, so down, and it, it's, it is a parcel owned by the Parks and Recs Department. And it's, it's green space it on the west side where there is a community garden yep. that we have spent yep. some years building yep. out. So I would like to say that if uh, you have a community space mm. and the community came up with what they think should be there, which is what we did organically, literally, mm. to build a community garden, then people come in and they're like, hey, we're gonna build a community center that rips out 
your community garden. So I find just the entire approach of how this was done kind of troubling. Let me start with. I was gonna say, let can I can I do a little more background because sure. I know you're gonna have a, a, the troubling parts. So back in June, they went directly to this subcommittee. Um, who then said, well, oh, we're just going to approve it. With the, Joe Lavasser did not vote to move it on to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. Um, outside of the organization and the, the project itself, um, apparently these subcommittees, lands and buildings or whatever, I'm not, I, I presume, having been a state rep, where the committees and the subcommittees do the legwork and then, you know, rank referrals up the... Apparently that is not what subcommittees do. Um, last night at the th a meeting we were at, Pat Long kind of took offense that I said lands and buildings didn't do due diligence. They didn't look into this more before they sent it on to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. And he said, we are following the same procedure we've been following all along. We just re review it and pass it on. And I'm like, okay, so then why have subcommittees? If, if you're not gonna do the work, What's the point of a subcommittee other than another layer of bureaucracy? Anyways, so back in June, they approved to send it to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen, which will get voted on next Tuesday. Um, and then the neighbors started saying, what the hell? No, okay, so where I <laughs> heard about this was when I read the Union Leader article mm -hmm. that reported on the subcommittee being like, hey, there's this parcel of land, 4.2, I believe, acres mm -hmm. on the west side that is green space that has our community garden in. Um, and, oh, we're just uh, now this other, I think it's like 300,000 square foot, like a football size football field size one two or three story building with parking uh is going to decimate our our community garden and uh that's the first i heard of it now i did hear the lady last night i happened to have a we heart west t-shirt on and she was like oh we heart west and i was kind of taken aback and uh and then i asked my husband who serves on the board of that and also picks up 90 percent of the trash that's left behind on the west side um and, and he said, oh, yeah, you know, we actually did help distribute the survey link to people, but then got cut out when the decision started to be right. made about which property they're going to pick. So, so last night there was a, a community meeting. Um, there was three public meetings prior to this June 10th proposal to the Lands and Buildings Committee. But, I mean, they were more of – but that, no, they were more generic in the – like, what do you think about a community center on the west side? They were more, they were a much broader focus. Once this went to lands and buildings, I think what happened, and rightfully so, is folks like yourself and Brink Slattery and people down on Hebe Street, the actual people who live next to the property, were like, well, hold on, time out. When did we, when, when did anybody ask us if we wanted a community center? So they had a public meeting last night. So uh, also what we determined at that was that the abutters to the property were given notice like five days ago. Yes, last, before, within last the past week. week. For, for yesterday's meeting. So I think last Tuesday, so right. Tuesday to the Monday, that is when they deemed it necessary to talk to the neighbors. To, to the community right. where you are putting in the community so, center. you know, I don't think we ever get a specific answer because the way it's, I feel like there's a lot of inconsistencies with what's being talked about. Um, there, the article in the Union Leader on the 26th, so a couple weeks ago, said they're um, looking to purchase the property for $600,000. Um, they want to build um, the anchor agencies, and it says it right in quotes, anchor agencies being the Boys and Girls Club of Manchester and Amoskeg Health, and it's a two-story building expected to be about 40,000 square feet. Um, I do believe that whether there is enough do, um, investigation going on, I do believe that they looked at some other properties. I know I heard that they went to approach Manchester Housing Authority because up on Kimball Street, where the projects are, there's a quite a bit of land. And I did look this morning. Um, there's a large parcel, multiple acres that the Manchester Housing owns. And then adjacent to that, so the, the, the wooded area that goes between um, the Mast Lake 
and up the hill, like where that beach is, all the way at the top, that's all parks and rec land. Hmm. So there is parcels of land that are other green spaces that aren't being readily used because this and parcel of grass is definitely being used. The community gardens, which I had never been to before, and I walked through with one of the organizers and whatnot. It's a very nice community garden they got going on over there. And there's a green lawn that the kids play on. So I want to categorically state one thing. I believe in free markets mm. and I hate nimbyism because I do think property rights matter. And if you have your property, you should be able to make choices and decisions with it. So I want to start there because I don't want to get criticized that we're suddenly saying not in my backyard. Right. Here's what I find troubling is this seems like a cronyistic deal. The property is currently owned by Parks and Rec. Mm -hmm and it is supposed to be designated for green space. How I look at what's happening is then they sort of secretly went, they did a handshake. Wait, who they? I just want to clarify, who I mean, they? So it seems like uh, the mayor and okay. uh, uh, Parks and Rec okay. who was there. So last night at last night's meeting, just to sketch mm. this uh, scenario for everyone, there were probably 60, 70 people. There was a fair amount of people. It, it, was, it, was, it was nice. It was nice. I would say 15 of those. Uh, somehow the mayor was there. Parks and Recs was there. Uh, Senator D'Alessandro oh, was there. Um, Alderman um, uh, Trisiani the was Alderman. there. Alderman um, Joe, school, the school board member Hamer was there. State Rep. Hamer was there, State Rep. Bolio was there. There was this whole little compadre. Yeah. So, so I would say like the, the like fifteen to twenty what? of of the establishment city operators. Well, and they Operative. used the term last night. More than one person used the term of um, influencers. Yes, just saying. Um, we're there, and so let's say that it was like fifty to twenty, and then honestly. Everyone else, as far as I could tell, based on when people were applauding, yeah. were there as abutters and people from the neighborhood who were like, "They, w hello, excuse me, what? We're going to build this thing? Who's going to pay the taxes? Yeah. Oh, this is tax-free, but you're going to put in these services. So our taxes are going to go up, but you didn't even bother to, to talk add, to, to us mention about it. this. So interesting. Do you notice um, Ward 11 Alderman, Norm Gamash, not there. So the Alderman that's gonna vote on this major disruption to this neighborhood. Because if you drive around Parkside and Gosler School, if you drive on Blucher Street and whatnot, which I did purposely just to make yeah. sure I wasn't remembering it incorrectly, most of those houses are single family homes that are like right across the street from the school. So they already have to deal with school traffic and school employees parking in front of the driveway. I heard, talked to quite a few people after the meeting who said, you know, it's constant that people block driveways and whatnot. And then you have people down on Heavey Street, which does tend to be more multifamily, but these families have lived there for, you know, decades. I mean, the one eight lady years. who testified said she their family owned six parcels on Heavey. And on Heavey that dead ends into the park. Right. And uh they've been there for eighty five years. Right. And that and in it, fact I met the mother. <laughs> and the and the, the parcel that they're looking at doesn't actually have a street address because it's not actually on a street. It but it abuts uh the Heavey Street dead end. It abuts an alleyway off of Blucher. It it's a very it's it's strange. Um but a couple things besides Norm Gamash not bothering to attend a meeting in his own neighborhood. Um, I went back to the article from the union leader. I actually thought he was there. I might have missed. Look. He didn't say a word if it was there. You would think he'd have something to say. But um, interesting thing, because I talked to some people and they were concerned that we'd be bringing an element into the neighborhood, not only for the neighborhood, but for the kids that are at those schools. But I did think this was an interesting um, couple little tidbits here. Mayor Joyce Craig called the underutilized site. It's not really where under, there's a community where garden a community where we are growing and food. the kids play in the lawn. Yes, next to a school. Which, by the way, they've got the the community garden is building out like flower gardens and um, pollinating gardens into the wooding wooded area. So they're improving like this whole lot. Anyways. The underutilized site, perfect for such a project, state, state, saying it's an extension of Parks and Rec. And I'm thinking, get, selling this property is not an extension of Parks and Rec. But anyway, she goes on, the mission of this community is consistent with Parks and Rec. 
They are serving the youth and families of the West Side. Then to take it a step further, they are investing 17 million into this property and we all know we would never be able to do that, which the city wouldn't be able to not give her that. So down further, they talk about um, Mark Stebbins and who died, you know, I, all the Mark Stebbins stuff. And it said the entire 17 million will be privately raised. So now I was at this meeting last night and I asked a couple questions and Carla asked a couple questions and everything. They very clearly said the money was part of the money was coming from the federal government and from grants. So these are all this so, is AARP, which is not just the retirement fund, no, but the ARPA. actual yeah, the the um the, the rescue plan, yeah. right? The American rescue plan. So this is funny money well, and from it's, DC where they're like, We gotta funnel well, this I, somewhere. You know what? It's one thing if they're getting money from that. That you know, that there's always these crazy grant monies and federal funds that, you know, there's projects you can do with them. But don't tell don't tell the people the entire money will be privately raised. I mean, I guess it technically is privately raised from federal funds and grants. I am confident that some of this money will come from private sources. But you're making it sound like we're going to buy this piece of property from the city so that we can improve things for the community, even though from what I saw last night, the community is very concerned about this being built there because nobody can really tell us what the building's going to look like, who's going to actually be housed, other, short of Boys and Girls Club and Amoskeg Health, which Amoskeg Health, if I'm not mistaken, used to be Manchester Community Health, but that didn't sound like good anymore because that sounds like poor people health, so now we just call it Amoskeg Health because that sounds better. Um, so if you live in this neighborhood, which I do, you've got the schools and you're dealing with the traffic for the schools and everything, but you're used to that, fine. But now you're going to bring in an element that probably is very much needed on the west side of Manchester. But this, a health center, this is in a neighborhood. This is not in, this is not on 2nd Street, Street or South Main Street or even Kelly Street. This is in a predominantly single family, family. neighborhood that nobody thought was important to talk to the neighborhood or even tell the neighborhood before they kept moving forward. And I didn't appreciate, despite the honesty that was being presented, that they kept using the word overtures. Like, oh, you do these overtures and you reach out to people. And I'm like, that sounds like, you know, palm greasing. But um, they said, we follow the rules on, notif we completely follow the, the, the rules on notifying abutters. And Brink did stand up and said, there's a difference between legal and right. So, so just to clarify, so someone said, uh, but when did you, uh, it might even have been me, like <laughs> when, when did you tell the abutters about this? And they said, oh, well, last week. And everyone was kind of like, the energy was like, that seems a little shady. Right. You, you, oh, and, and, and I think and, the only reason they had this meeting is because there oh, was Facebook outrage over what the hell is going and, on. And, and by the way, this meeting, which was uh, designated, we were in uh, Parkside from 6 to 7. Yep. Uh, they spent the first 20 minutes presenting stuff to us. We had to listen to at least five or 10 minutes of Silvio Dupuy talk about how he grew up on the West Side, which was completely irrelevant to... The discussion at hand. And 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 then, uh, so let's say, you know, and then uh, actually the first gentleman who spoke is someone who's very hands-on with the community hmm. garden. And so he was, I mean, he was more polite than I am. I, I need to work on that energy, actually, because I get I, I get into lawyer mode and I'm just immediately like, I'm going to crush you. And there are better ways to do that, of course. So, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. But I am angry because I feel like, this is not being handled right. So, so the way you build community isn't that you take the literal taxpaying community that live there and just go, well, we're going to provide these other services here to who's the community? Right. Like, like, aren't we all the community? You can't just pick and choose which part it is and then actually shaft the people who are paying the bills, right. whether it's because of stolen money from the federal government, because everyone goes, oh, it's, it's free. free money. But you know what? It's not. That free money is why your gas is expensive right now and why none of us are going to be able to afford energy costs this year. So, um, so it, 
it's just been handled really poorly. Some of my questions to them were, what were the other properties that you looked at? Uh, they mentioned something on Second Street. Yep, which I think, which not, the more I thought it through, that's the dog park, that's Bass Island. I was thinking they looked at something on Second Street, like down near McDonald, right, down right. on what yep. I call, you know, yep. what you think of Second yep. Street. But I do know that they looked at Bass Island and that's got contamination on it, so. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and, and honestly, just to not, so if I was doing this program, I would start with the people who live around the property. Right. You don't end there. Well, and then kind of present it as this fait accompli. So another thing I found deeply offensive, I've, I've presented and taken probably like scores of mediation classes over the years, mm -hmm. right? Like that's a skill that you develop as a lawyer. So there are certain ways and certain tricks that you do. So one of the tricks is if you hear things you don't like, when you're whiteboarding it out, you just leave those off. You right. just pretend that like, oh, that part wasn't there. So the first gentleman, Bob, the gentle gardener Bob who stood up, uh, started with, uh, it feels like everyone's going uh, like when as opposed to if, right. right? And I watched them ignore that. And then when he continued, because, you know, I have suggestions or ideas, should it go forward, what it should look like. But before we even have that conversation, the conversation has to be, is this the right spot? Right. And categorically, at least for the property owners, in the, the neighborhood, it doesn't seem like the right spot. I have several other questions. So I do see the kids out and about, right? Mm -hmm. But you hardly ever see them down at the park. The baseball fields are never used. Yep. That football field's never used. None of the things we've already built and that we are already paying for are being utilized. So maybe we should start there. Secondly, why don't we just do after school programs for $17 million at the schools that are already there? If what we are, what I heard was, oh, we have these kids and from 2.30 to five, they're kind of maraudering around the neighborhood, then do we need a new building that's going to make all our lives harder? Or can we address the problem in a different way? Which brings me to the point that to me, it seems like we should be following the money mm. because this private public combination, mm -hmm. uh, the question begs to be asked, what's the construction company that is going to get this $17 million mm. windfall? Right. Um, the the lot itself does not lend itself to more parking. And no, was I didn't know about more where parking, the parking was, was like, going to be. Can we please not replace a actual community garden with green space where we are growing food, where we can teach people how to cook, where we can actually have and expand that should there be a need um, to to, to put in a parking to, to, to put in parking. And then this MSGEG health services, that to me that, sounds like code for junkies. I'm sorry. Well, I don't, I don't think MSGEG, I don't think, like I would have concerns because one of the partners listed originally was Waypoint and I was like, okay, they're, they're a drug connect, drug related, you know, uh, addiction related entity. And I don't know why we would want to introduce that, but MSGEG health is your, your, healthcare for those who have like no place to get healthcare but, but we that's have not three hospitals well but that they don't that's not what hospitals do that's just not what hospitals do the hospitals i do mean right provide next to the right aid that they just built at cmc really they can't put a little like clinic well, in but there but the thing is is that cmc has purchased all that property so now all the what would be good areas probably for something like this has been purchased by catholic medical center and but they're one of the partners on there too i know i know so, so they so they've got to there's got to be better way. there's got to be another way i so, know one of the places they looked at was manchester housing like i said up on kimball what bothers me is the way it's been relayed back to me was manchester housing is not willing to give up any of their green space for this facility and i thought so oh, wait a but minute we should so the property owners the property taxpayers in the vicinity of gosler and parkside are supposed to give up their green space, their public green space, but the people living in 
subsidize housing up on Kimball because that's what it is. It's subsidized housing who aren't paying the taxes. We shouldn't disrupt their green space. So, so, so there's, you know, who's who's the winners and losers sometimes? And, and, and that's actually, I think that's why I'm angry is exactly that reason. So from an economic perspective also, and we've talked about this a lot on this show, whatever you subsidize, you get more yeah. of, okay? And if you don't believe me, look at every single Democrat-controlled city, San Francisco, Seattle, whatever, where if they, they subsidize people's drug use, so you get more drug users, yeah. when you allow that sort of stuff to happen. So to come in and, uh, you know. I know. <laughs> to, to, to be like, okay, so we're gonna subsidize these more programs. I have a question. So, uh, did the property prices next to the Boys and Girls Club on the east side go up well, or down? Those weren't residential properties. I looked on the map to see where it was because I was like, "Well, is this smack dab in a neighborhood?" And it's really not. So, because somebody, because oh, it's kind of because like it's kind of in that like Union lake. Street. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. I mean, there was somebody who had legitimate concerns: is her property value going to go up or down? Um, I, do I know our taxes are going to go up. <laughs> I do want to mention that the next board of mayor and alderman yes. meeting, which there is no agenda published yet, but they will be discussing this. And we'll have three minutes it, each to testify. And if you think this is a crappy idea, please, please, please um, come out. It's on the 19th. Is, well, what's today? Today's the 12th. Tomorrow, 12th. So the 19th. Next week Tuesday. Uh, July 19th at City Hall. It's up on the third or fourth floor of Aldermanic Chambers. There is a hearing at six o'clock, which is a road hearing having to do with Second Street back extension, which I can't even figure out where that is, but that's beside the point. The actual meeting is at seven. I would recommend getting there a little early in case they start early. Um, like Carla said, you get three minutes. Every person can have three minutes to voice their concerns or opposition or support. I mean, if you think this is a wonderful idea, then by all means, come out and, and say honestly, so. Honestly, like if, if they just put the property out to bid instead of whatever this is, I, I feel like I wouldn't really have a leg to stand on because maybe... I would pull in with my neighbors and the lady on Heavy Street right, and, and Brink and be like, you know what, for $601,000, we're willing to buy that and just let the community garden thrive. Thrive. We're going to run out of time. I did want to say I was did meet one woman at the meeting last night um, who lives on Tondro Court who is working with Parks and Rec or talking with Parks and Rec because she has big concerns about the homeless in the Piscataquag River Park and yeah, the fact that it's never problem. cleaned up. Yeah. And she's trying to spearhead an effort to clean that park up and Im improve it. So I did get, you know, I met some great people last night it from was the neighborhood. Wonderful. Honestly, to meet more of our neighbors, it yeah. was, that was fantastic. And honestly, let's just have the conversation. We are not here to be railroaded and we are part of the community. Thank you. And we pay the bills. If you live on the West side or if you just have an idea of a property, um, that could house a boys and girls club on the west side of Manchester, by all means, you can email it to us at manchtalk at gmail.com. I'll gladly refer it on to, you know, the powers that be that are working on this. Um, but otherwise, I hope to see some of you uh, on next Tuesday at the Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting. And until then, uh, stay cool. We're going to have another hot week. And we'll be back next week with more. Bye, guys. Bye.